Friday morning to you. We're glad you're with us here on Up With Krem. I'm Tim Pham. Well, if you are running Junior Blooms Day this weekend, it's going to be a perfect weekend for it. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick telling us this weekend we could expect 70 degree temperatures. Ooh, Thomas? Easily. In fact, yesterday the forecast was 70 and 70. Today I went 72 and 74, so it even went up just in the last 24 hours. Though before we get there, we got to get through a chance of a spotty shower this morning or an isolated thunderstorm this afternoon. So right now, just cloudy skies in Spokane. We're at 49 degrees, pretty much good to go, not just this morning, but likely most of the day, because in these green shaded areas from the Palouse and southward is where the thunderstorm chances will lie for this afternoon, especially in that darker green shaded area. It's considered a severe weather outlook because hail and gusty winds will be a threat and a hazard with some of the strongest thunderstorm cells that we see later on today but that will be across the southernmost areas of the inland northwest. We'll go through that in a bit more detail coming up, but there's your weekend, as promised, well into the 70s, both Saturday and Sunday. A traffic alert for you. Starting next week, Washdot crews will close East Euclid Avenue between North Market and North Ralph Street starting this Monday, which is April 15th. Here's how you'll want to get around this. You can take North Market Street to East Wellesley Avenue and North Freya Street. Crews are expected to work through May. New this morning, families of two women who were shot and killed during a music festival at the Gorge Amphitheater last year have filed wrongful death lawsuits. The lawsuit claims that the event organizer Live Nation, security and other companies involved failed to enforce its prohibition of drugs and weapons at the event. James Kelly is accused of taking mushrooms and then shooting in the campground. Brandy Escamilla and Jocelyn Ruiz were killed. Kelly pleaded not guilty to the five charges against him. He is expected back in court next month for a readiness hearing for his trial. In a CREM2 News exclusive, the family of a missing Spokane man is pleading for help to find him. 62-year-old Robert Abbott has been missing since April 5th. Abbott's wife says she came home and found blood on the floor. Abbott's missing BMW was eventually found at a trailer park in Mead. Now Star Abbott is asking for help to find her husband. I need, I need answers. I need, I need my husband. I need my friend. I need his family to come forward. I need some, someone. I mean, we need more people to help us find Robert. The Spokane County Sheriff's Office says it is still investigating the case as a missing person case. The Sheriff's Office also says major crimes detectives found and collected evidence from where Abbott is presumed to have gone missing. Anyone with information about Robert Abbott is encouraged to call Crime Check. This morning, some relief for those impacted by wildfires. Eight months after those two destructive wildfires in Spokane County, victims of the Oregon Road and Gray Fires now qualify for tax relief. The IRS giving those taxpayers until June 17th to file their federal, individual, and business tax returns and make tax payments. The new deadline also applies to those who had an extension to file their 2022 taxes. The IRS says tax year 2022 tax payments are not eligible for the relief since they were originally due before the wildfires. For a full look at who the relief applies to, be sure to check our website, creme.com. Well, did you recently receive an email from the Student Loan Debt Department claiming you qualified for student loan forgiveness? Ariane Daytil with our Verify team looks into whether this email is real. On April 8th, the Biden administration announced new plans for student debt relief for 30 million student borrowers. Since then, some Verify viewers sent us this email they received from the Student Loan Debt Department, claiming they qualify for forgiveness. But is the Student Loan Debt Department email legit? Let's verify using these sources. The emails say you're eligible for relief under the 2024 guidelines. But the plans the White House just announced are only a proposal and haven't been implemented yet. So we can verify, no, the student loan debt department emails are not legit. And honestly, they've got the markers of a scam. One viewer who received a version of this email told us they don't even have student loan debt. Aside from that obvious red flag, we'll show you the other indicators that this is a scam. 
First, the student loan debt department doesn't exist. Student loans and forgiveness are managed through the Education Department's Federal Student Aid Office. Next, the email didn't come from an official government email address, but rather a random Hotmail address. According to the Federal Student Aid Office, there are only three email addresses from which the Department of Education will send information about student debt relief. The email also says the Student Loan Debt Department is a marketing firm, which a government agency would never say. And lastly, typos and urgent language are also indicators that an email may be a scam. The email includes two different versions of the words student loans, both of which are wrong. And it urges recipients to take action because their file will only be open for one more day. So if you get an email like this one, look for red flags. And if you're still not sure, send it to us at questions at verifythis.com. With your Verify, I'm Ariante Till. The Krem Cares Diaper Drive is happening right now. We are partnering with Vanessa Behan to support local families in need. Right now at Aerial Rosars, we are selling those $10 bags. They represent a week's worth of diapers and wipes. Through April 21st, you can buy the bags while doing your shopping. Families can then come to Vanessa Behan to get diapers throughout the year. The diaper drive has helped provide more than 2.5 million diapers since it began. Families say they are so grateful for the support. I absolutely am amazed with them because they have always been there you know, to help. Even like in times where, you know, you're doing totally fine and you're like, you hit the spot where you're like, okay, I need some diapers. <laughs> they are there to help every time. And so I think it's pretty amazing what they do. If you want more information on how to donate, go to our website, creme.com, or text the word diaper to 509-448-2000. And that brings us to our wake up call question of the morning. This morning, we wanna see your baby pictures or maybe your family members' baby pictures. Here's some of the great photos we've received within the last hour or so. Look at these cuties, so stinking cute. I love the faces too. Kind of like, uh, why are you taking these photos of me? But also some really joyful ones too. Text us at 509-448-2000 and you may see your baby picture here on Up With Creme. On this Friday morning, we are seeing a few light scattered showers across the southern portions of the inland northwest. That'll be a focal point through the day today, though this morning, lighter stuff, nothing in terms of thunderstorms. That'll be later on for this afternoon. I'm going to stop Doppler radar. We're going to zoom in over the LC Valley. Looks like some locations between Lewiston, Pomeroy, and out towards Washtuckna getting a bit of that light scattered shower activity. It's pretty few and far between so far this morning. That'll be the case for the remainder of these morning hours. Hours. Midday plenty dry throughout the region, but this afternoon an isolated thunderstorm chance in those same areas, especially near Lewiston, Idaho and southward. That's where the best chances for any thunderstorms will be today. No threat for rain or storms over the weekend. Very warm, very sunny both days and then another cold front will be arriving early next week, prompting a windy day for this Monday.